domain slash sw.js. This is not a typical JavaScript file. It, it is completely valid JavaScript, but you do not want to hash it. You do not want to cache it on the server side. It is a very special uh, thing that you want to understand that it, you want to understand that it's different than like a normal web asset. So let me just play a scenario out for you. So this service worker file, this sw.js, has all of my service worker code. It has all of the logic for how my site caches itself on a browser. So let's say I have a bug in that and I need to fix it. Okay, great. I fix it, I push my code to prod. I realize that I have been setting my expiration on my JavaScript files and across my entire site with a one year expiration. You just screwed yourself uh, because none of the browsers then, unless somebody's smart enough to know and know how to clear their own local cache, that file is not going to get pulled down by the browser for one year until it expires locally. So you want to be very, very careful about what you said is expires, headers, and cache control headers on that file. Um, you also want to make sure that because it's at the root of your site, uh, service workers have scopes. And this was this kind of threw me for a loop too, but um, a scope it means it, a service worker can only run on tabs that are at the same at its own scope or lower. If that makes sense. So because I have the SWJS file at the root of my site, it has access to any tab under my site in my site tree. Um, if I were to put that under you know slash static files slash JS, it actually couldn't run on any of my other tabs. It's a security thing, it's a way of allowing like, um, making sure that like if a company wants to host multiple apps under one domain that those apps don't conflict with each other. So, so yeah, so that's basically uh, how service worker gets registered. You basically wait till the browser is ready, and then tell it to, to register. So um, let's keep on chugging here. So then let's build this thing. Let me come down here. Oops. See that? I can't see that, so let me just do this. That's not gonna work. Alright. gonna run my kind of standard webpack production build. And then while that's running, what it's gonna do is it's gonna dump everything into this build folder, just like your compiled output of your site. You can see there's our our uh, service worker, all good to go. And So then let's go look at how this looks when it runs. So just gonna do so I'm just gonna run the site here. So I'm on local host now. And let's just look at what, what's the dev experience look like for this. So uh, you can see here, can you guys see the network tab there very easily? service worker development, you're going to live over here on this application tab. All right, This is where all the caches are, IndexedDB, cookies is probably what most of you have come here for. But there's this service worker tab now. And first thing you're going to do is update on reload. 
that way as you're refreshing and working through this, it's going to actually refresh the site. So, um, and then the button you saw me push earlier, the bypass for network, that's going to allow you to say, hey, I, I don't care what's cached, just go back to the server and get a fresh set, that way I can kind of keep on moving here. Um, and then the way you kind of reset here, this is like the nuke option, but it's pretty simple. Just go in, clear the site data, and now if you go back here, any service worker version, it kind of keeps a version history here, has been like wiped from your app, okay? So, what I'm going to do here is we've got a new, I've got the page here, and I'm going to show you what does it look like when this loads. Like, what does that kind of paradigm feel like when you're, when you're utilizing a service worker? So, I'm going to refresh it, and then just watch the network tab, okay? So I've got a really slow site, it's averaging like two seconds for everything that hits my server. And you can get to kind of see like some of the stuff that's coming from a CDN, it's getting there pretty quick, six milliseconds, coming from a cache. But everything else is just taking, it's just dog slow. We've got some Ajax requests going. And then what you'll see then is after the whole site's loaded, that service worker gets registered. There's that SWJS. And when it comes down, it starts fetching its own scripts. It fetches that pre-cache manifest that, that Webpack generated for us. It, and then it brings down Workbox from Google's CDN. Okay, so that you can load external scripts into your service worker. And then it brings down some of its own plugins since I'm in dev mode. And then what it does is it then will run through that pre-cache manifest, and that's what these files down here are. My chunks, my, these are you know, kind of standard looking webpack output right there. And it's caching all these. And you can tell that the service worker is doing it because you got a little gear icon there. Okay? And so if I flip back over here, that slow page is now much, much snappier. And if you go back and look at the, the page, you can see all of the stuff that my browser requested is now way less than two, two full seconds. And you can see it tells me it loaded it from the service worker. So it never even hit the network. All right? So, Another cool thing that Workbox does is while you're developing is you get these nice Workbox statements as to what it's doing. So it's not this like black box. So you can tell, okay, it loaded and then it was pre-caching and then I have some Ajax calls down here that I'll, we'll talk about here in a second. So it's, really, it's been really nice this way, that way I can understand when something's being cached and when something isn't. And that's probably been what I've found to be one of the bigger challenges when working with a service worker is, okay, just because I make a code change and I go refresh the browser, that code isn't running just yet. You kind of have to think, I have to do two refreshes, right? So I gotta refresh to get my new service worker code loaded, and then I gotta refresh again to see if the caching logic that that service worker is doing is now actually working. All right. So that's why when I refreshed the first time, it was still dog slow. But the second time, it's pretty snappy. Um, let's see, deploying. So then, uh, one last note here too, because this bites people is make sure you aren't uh, hard coding like localhost anywhere. Because when you deploy, um, that will bite you. Um, also, the probably more likely thing that will happen to you is if, you're, uh, if your site uses multiple host names, 
like you have different aliases coming into your site, you need to figure out a way to dynamically pass that host name in when you register the service worker. So if you're at like, um, you know, myapp.yoursite.com, but you've your service worker is being registered under like myinternalapp.mysite.com, they won't work. It will. You'll get an error on that one. So little trickiness there, especially if you're like 10 layers deep inside of a, you know, on like cloud hosting and your IT department is setting up all kinds of different URLs, you'll have to kind of do some, some, some stuff there. So, so now uh, let's kind of get into maybe the meat of what I was going to talk about. And that is, I've got site, a site that is slow. How can I use a service worker to speed it up? Okay. Um, because while we don't like to admit it, a lot of us in the name of serving our product managers and our customers end up shoving lots of Ajax calls into our page, which makes them just be grow and grow and grow in their, uh, their slowness. So uh, this is all in that mission of getting that TTI, that time to interactive, down. So, what I've done here is so I wasn't completely sure exactly how reliable the network was going to be, so I, I did some cheating here. But um, effectively, what I have is a uh, and they four Ajax requests. We're firing them all off in parallel. They're all going to the same place. Um, and I have to wait on all those to complete before my graph is ready to show. Okay? Done this scenario fair, a fair number of times for internal business apps. You know, you've got like Chart.js or something and you're trying to show your CEO a dashboard. But you've got to fetch a bunch of data before you can show that dashboard. Right? Um, so yeah, so I'm going to fetch all that data before I, until I got that data fetched, I'm not going to re render my React app. Um, so if we flip back here, I'm still on localhost. What I'm going to do here, clear this stuff. I'm going to wipe my service worker real quick. And... Reload it. And I'm gonna do this. I know I did this before, but it's, I think it's good to kind of see what, see this multiple times. There, the page kind of loaded slow, still loading, still loading, still loading. There we got the chart. Final. Okay. So how do I overcome this? Well, if I refresh again. third time, now it's snappy. Why the third time? Well, let's look at our logs. So, what happened here is first, time, first page load, we just got the service worker down. And all the service worker knew to do on the very first initial install of itself is to pre-cache the, the site assets, right? That's all I had told it to do. The second refresh, I had my Ajax calls kick off, which you can see um, right here. But I had told the service worker to cache these Ajax calls, which is what I want to do, but the caches weren't primed yet. So that second refresh was just priming the cache just getting that data in there. The third refresh, we finally see the caches start to do something for us. Okay? And you can see it saying, basically, I intercepted this call and I used a stale while revalidate strategy. So what does that mean? Well, if I go back over here to my network tab 
And let's clear this out. Now my caches are primed. I refresh this. What's going on here? If I can get enough of these windows dragged out of the way, we can see what's going on. So, the sum data is my AJAX calls, right? You can see I shot four of these off. The service worker intercepted those, responded with the cache value. I had 25 millisecond calls. That's awesome. And then immediately after that, you can see the service worker then sent out four AJAX calls in the background. And you can see each one is a nice giant stair step that makes users very, very sad. And it's refilling that cache. Okay? So this is one of work, what Workbox calls a strategy. And this is their, their safest strategy right out of the uh, out right out of the gate. Is every call you make, it's gonna say, Do I have a cache value? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna hand you that cache value, but in this in parallel, I'm gonna go back and try to update that resource at the same time. Okay? So that way subsequent calls. Are, it's trying to keep that cache as fresh as possible. And that's why I call it the safest option out of the box. Like you're going to you're, you're have a very, very small window there where you're not effectively getting the, 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 most, uh, the most recent data. So, so let's talk a little bit more about what... what workbox strategies are. So all workbox strategies are is just they're just wrappers around taking intercepting fetch requests in the browser or AJAX requests and stuffing those into the browser's cache. It, uh, and these are just native things in the browser. You can manually write this code. Alright, there are plenty of examples out on the internet and books of here's how to write a stale while revalidate chunk of code. But remember what I said at the beginning. Workbox is the jQuery of, for service workers. Just like jQuery allowed us to not have to manually update the DOM elements or query for class selectors, it gave us really nice terse ways of doing that. That's what Workbox is doing. It says, I have this common strategy. This is not a hard thing to think through. Make that as easy for me to do as possible. So what's that look like? If I go back here, I go to my SWJS call. It looks exactly like that. So I basically say I want to cache any, anything that, um, any get request that comes through for that URL, which if you can see it, I can barely see up here with I've got this thing blown up so bad. Uh, it says anything that matches that, use this stale while revalidate strategy. Okay? Can I ask a question? Go. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a way to be notified by Workbox when it's completed the cache refresh? So, like, for example, you did your fetches, you're going to update the display, and then two seconds later it gets new data, so you can trigger off that instead of having to manually. Yeah. Do another fact, try and guess when it's ready. Yep, you sure can. So the question is, like, is there a way I can wait and when it does get the new data down that I can trigger an update to my UI? Yeah. There definitely is. Seriously, I'm like hitting the tip of the iceberg on what service workers can do. You can do like, you can do really cool stuff like send messages to all tabs at once. Um, you can actually set up channels. Uh, it's a new API in the browser. You can have one-to-one -one communication with individual tabs. It's, it's pretty sick all the options you can do there. I'm just exploring a very, very uh, focused vein of one of these. So, um, And yeah, so what I'm, I don't have here, kind of getting close to time here, but this is a constructor. You can pass in options and you can tune this in. You can, you can set up a custom expiration time if you want it to last for 30 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever. Uh, you can do that. In fact, actually, so let me give a little backstory here. 
So my, the goal that I was really, really, really trying to get to tonight, and I'm, I'm pretty darn close, is debouncing Ajax requests. And what I mean by debouncing, um, I've run into many times in my life having multiple components on my web page that all end up fetching at least one of the same resources. So a common one is like, I'm trying to think of a good example here, pricing. Um, I want to build components in a reusable way, but maybe each, like four of the components need some pricing data. And so I just never had a great way of making a reusable component that shared Ajax, one single Ajax request across those. This allows you to do that. If you have a site today and you're like, oh my god, this page is making 10 of the exact same requests, but the code is 300,000 lines and I don't know how to go in and refactor that down, you don't have to. You can come in and set up a service worker and debounce those. So, um, and so this is kind of a slightly more advanced example of using a different workbox strategy that gets you can get you also very close to that. So um, this one is a cache first. So the stale while we validate says, I'm gonna hand you, if you ask me for data and I have it cached, I'm gonna hand it to you, but I'm immediately go back and get it. Cache first is more aggressive. It's gonna say, if you ask me for data and I have it, I'm gonna give it to you and I'm just gonna sit back until you manually refresh me. So, um, or, you start getting fancy and trying to mess with expirations. Um, one of the other things that you can do with these strategies is you can actually um, even put in your own custom handling logic. You can just say, actually cache first strategy, I'm smart enough, I'm going to tell you exactly how to handle this. And you can just implement the logic yourself, you know, extending the, the different strategies. So, um, so yeah, kind of close to time here. I can, if anybody wants to stay after, I can show you what it looks like if I flip it around to use the cash first strategy. Um, it actually does debounce them. You'll see one request go out, but then the expiration is what kind of bites you there. You got to fiddle with that one a little bit more. So, um, so yeah, and yeah, like I said, do you want your pages to be that fast? When they start out being at least eight seconds to get there, there's a viable path to do that. So, um, yeah, that's that's it for me tonight. Um, anything else? Nope. That's my Twitter handle. Um, I'm on that way more than my wife would like. So, if you have questions, feel free to hit me. Up. So, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. That was great. Um, I don't have any closing slides, but I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to once again say thank you to Enterprise Works for the space, um, which we can we can hang out here for another half hour or so. Um, if you guys want to empty all the food, that's fine. Just like write down, take the big old thing in hand and just you know write down the old rule. Um, that's great. Um, feel free to hang out. Again, I'm always looking for speakers. I'm always looking for venues. Um, just reach out to me, talk to me after this, email me. Um, sorry for all the spam emails trying to get people to RSVP, but I think it worked. We got a decent turnout tonight. Um, thanks again. Thank you.